The broadcast is now starting. All attendees are in listen-only mode. This is Christine Langley with the Wyoming Women's Business Center, and I want to welcome you to Managing Inventory in QuickBooks, the online version. The Wyoming Women's Business Center is a nonprofit organization that helps people who want to start or expand small businesses, specifically in the state of Wyoming. And we do that through three distinct programs. The first is business training and one-on-one -on -one counseling. The second is our microloan and individual development accounts programs. And the third is our Professional Artist Development Center. This QuickBooks training series is brought to you by our microloan program, which was started to provide access to funds for those unable to get business loans through traditional means. And if you'd like more information on our microloan program, you can contact Waldo Smith. And now I'd like to turn it over to Derek Campbell with Capital Clarity Company. Welcome, Derek. Thanks, Christine. Hello, everybody. In this video, I'm going to show you how to manage your inventory in QuickBooks Online. So many of the small businesses that I work with uh, stock inventory but don't necessarily know the number of units they have on hand or on order at any given time and have no way of getting that information quickly. So if you are a business owner that uses QuickBooks to manage your finances, you can also use QuickBooks to manage your inventory, um, which gives you the ability to track items uh, the number of items you have in stock and the value of your items after you sell and purchase them. As you order inventory items, you can receive the items and then later sell the items from your inventory. QuickBooks tracks each inventory related transaction and that way you will know the status of your inventory and will have a more accurate picture of your business's assets. So to track inventory in QuickBooks Online, you're gonna log into your QuickBooks Online company account and then you're gonna to go to this gear icon and select account and settings. Next, you're gonna to navigate to the sales tab on the side over here. And you want to ensure that track inventory quantity on hand is checked. And then push save and you can click done. The next thing you're gonna to wanna to do after um, you turn on your inventory levels, is you'll want to enter your products that you track inventory on. In order to do so, you'll go to the Sales tab and then Products and Services. You can also navigate to Products and Services from this upper menu once in the Sales screen. To create a new product, you're going to click the green button, and then we're going to we're going to create an inventory product. In this example, I'm going to use shirts. I'm going to essentially purchase shirts from a vendor, and then I turn around and I sell those shirts to my customers. Uh, I'm gonna put in my initial quantity on hand. So if I'm just now creating this product, but I've been selling shirts for a while now, I'm gonna wanna do a quick inventory count so that I know exactly how many I have on hand. And let's say right now I have 25, and I did my count just yesterday. Make sure that this, this count Date is accurate as of the day you created your, or you, uh, as of the day you did your inventory count to ensure that your inventory is tracked accurately. The next thing you're gonna put in is your inventory asset account. So let's back up a minute and talk a little bit about the process, the accounting process involved with managing inventory. When you purchase inventory from a vendor, you're going to track that inventory as an asset on your balance sheet. So that means that you purchased shirts from a vendor and now they're sitting in your warehouse and that's an asset to you. You have the ability to sell that and you wanna reflect that on your financials as a positive. So we're gonna record that into your balance sheet as an asset. When I sell this, this shirt or this product to my customers, I'm gonna take however many I sold, let's say one, out of my inventory, put it in the mail and ship it to my customer. So I'm gonna reduce that asset that I have on my balance sheet and now I'm going to increase the expenses on the profit and loss statement through cost of goods sold. The biggest reason we want to do this is that way I can track my cost of goods sold in relation to the income that it's associated with. And that gives me a gross margin. My gross margin then helps me determine if I'm charging enough for the products or services I'm providing. So in the example of shirts, if I buy shirts for $10 per shirt, and I sell them for $20, my gross margin is $10. And then I can use that $10 
as my gross profit to evaluate if that's enough to cover my other overhead expenses, such as salaries or rent or utilities, uh, things of that nature. So back into creating your product, uh, your inventory product, you're gonna select the asset account for your shirts. I'm gonna use inventory app for now, but if you have multiple different inventory items, it may be helpful to create different inventory accounts for those uh, categories of items. So in this case, I might create an account for t-shirt inventory. I can also create a description that will get displayed on the sales forms, such as an invoice or a sales receipt. And then I'm gonna say I sell these for $20 per shirt. Next, I'm gonna select the income account. This is the account on my profit and loss statement that's going to reflect every time I sell a shirt where that goes in. I'm gonna use sales of product income for now, but you may wanna create an income account for t-shirt revenue. If it is a taxable, a, a taxable uh, sale in regards to sales tax, you would wanna specify that here so that QuickBooks can help you track your sales tax. And then if you purchase this item from vendors, you can also add a description that will show up on purchasing forms if you choose to use purchase orders. Um, I can also enter the cost of what I purchased these shirts at. And keep in mind, all of this information can be overridden um, as I need it to if I'm creating a sales receipt or I'm receiving inventory in. Um, the, that, the last thing I wanna specify is the expense account. So we talked about when I move items out of my inventory account on my balance sheet and push them through my profit and loss, it's gonna hit cost of goods sold. So in this case, I'm gonna use cost of goods sold. You may wanna create a specific account such as cost of goods sold t-shirts if you wanna track that account specifically. If you have a preferred vendor that you use to purchase this specific item, or in this example, shirts, um, you could enter that preferred vendor here and it makes it a little quicker in creating your uh, forms. But I'm gonna click save and close so that I've created that product. That uh, product, You can see it down here at the bottom, shirts, and I have $10 and it looks like I have 25 on hand. The next thing you're gonna to wanna to do is when you purchase more shirts, so let's say I went out to my, my vendor and I purchased more shirts um, and I now have received them in my inventory, I'm gonna to wanna to record that transaction in QuickBooks and tell QuickBooks that I now have more inventory that's available to be sold. So in order to do so, I'm gonna click this plus sign up in the corner here and I'm gonna record an expense. I'm gonna put in who I paid uh, let's just say I'm buying computers for I'm buying shirts from computers by Jenny and specify the account that I paid for them out of uh, the payment beat and then the payment method that I used. Um, normally, you'll have this category details open for a typical expense. But I'm going to close that. and I'm going to open this item details. And from here, I can search for the product that I just created. Oops. And that'll pre-fill this. I'll tell QuickBooks how many I purchased. Let's say I purchased 50 of them. And they gave me my standard rate of $10 per shirt. So I essentially purchased $500 worth of inventory here. I can add a little memo. I can even attach a copy of the invoice or the, or the sales receipt or the purchase order if I need to as well. I'm going to click Save and Close. And then back in my Products and Services screen, if I come back down to Shirts, you'll now see my new quantity reflected here. So this is a good way to monitor and QuickBooks can also tell you uh, when you're running low on stock and when you're out of stock. So that's also a good way to know when it's time to order more stock as well. The final step in the managing inventory process is to create a sales receipt or an invoice for the specific item that we've created, in this case, shirts. So I'm now selling shirts to a customer. And let's say I'm selling shirts to, cools car, to cool cars. Um, I'm gonna create my invoice just as I always have. And then in the product list, I'm gonna, oops, I'm gonna select shirts. It's gonna pre-fill the description and I'm gonna sell five of them at my standard rate of $20. If I wanted to change the rate, I could do that here as well. So I'm gonna sell $100 worth of shirts. And what this does, I can click save and send if I wanna send this invoice via email, or in this case, I'm just gonna choose save and close. 
What I've just done there by creating an invoice for that, I've moved the shirts on that invoice, I've moved them out of my inventory and into my cost of goods sold and my profit and loss. And I've also at the same time recorded my sales for the shirts that I just sold on my profit and loss as well. So I've created some more gross profit. And that's a good thing to monitor um, when managing your business. For more information on managing your, or understanding your balance sheet and understanding your profit and loss, uh, please see those respective videos in their respective playlists. Uh, but with that, I wanna thank you for tuning in for this video on managing inventory in QuickBooks Online, and I will pass it back to Christine. Thanks, Derek. So the Wyoming Women's Business Center is made possible through several partnership agencies. Our primary funding comes from the U.S. Small Business Administration and the Wyoming Business Council. And so we're thankful for their support and others. And if you'd like more information on the Wyoming Women's Business Center, our contact information is listed on the screen. And if you're interested specifically in the microloan program, again, please contact Waldo Smith. Thanks everybody for joining us today.